Picture a monster that can attack at any time, that can change itself to evade the weapons used against it, and can go back to life from the dead. Sounds like something from a horror movie, but this monster is real. It killed Steve Jobs, Patrick Swayze, and when I was 14, my mother. Now my slide gives away the mystery, but the monster is cancer. And just like the different image of a monster you all have in your mind, cancer is always different, even in one patient over the course of treatment. And this is because when we treat cancer with a drug, there is the potential for it to change or mutate and become resistant. Cancer has many different mechanisms for survival. And so when we inhibit one, sometimes it becomes dependent on another. A great example of this was a clinical trial looking at the impact of anti-angiogenesis drugs. These are drugs that stop cancer's ability to grow new blood vessels towards it, bringing fresh oxygen and nutrients. Researchers thought that if they could stop this mechanism, the tumor would eventually starve and die. The problem was patients on the drug still died in the same amount of time, except without one large tumor, they had multiple small aggressive tumors all over their body. See, when researchers turned off its mechanism to go and find blood, it turned on the mechanism to spread throughout the body. But what if they could have predicted this? What if they could have predicted the primary and secondary mechanism and treated them together? Well, this idea is called combination therapy, and it is a great idea in theory. Because with 160 different approved chemotherapy drugs, finding the right combination by clinical trial is not only complicated, but expensive and potentially dangerous, as multiple drugs can mean multiple interactions and side effects. So if these killer combos do exist, how do we find them? Well, we compute them. I have created a computer simulation of cancer where we can actually watch it grow from the initial mutation to a fully detectable tumor in a matter of hours, adding treatment at any point along the way. I've studied 120 different combinations of treatments and looked at their impact on the cancer growth. I have found some combinations that effectively stop the cancer, and surprisingly, five dangerous combinations that make cancer worse. The key here is we found all this without making patients sick, costing millions of dollars, or taking the 12 years the average clinical trial takes. It is my hope that models like this will be used to narrow the field of drugs that need to be tested in clinical trials, and someday be specific enough to calculate the killer combo for each individual patient and finally slay the monster. Thank you.